Greetings and welcome to the Healthy Sales Chick Show. So happy that you are here with us this evening. I am Nancy White, the host of your show. And as my dear friend, Paula Fellingham, founder of Win Win Women, always says, we welcome you with open hearts and open arms. Again, I'm Nancy White, your host for this show. A question for you. Are your body cells happy and healthy from head to toe? Maybe they need a little refreshing or a makeover. This program is all about healthy mind, healthy body, and healthy spirit. For optimum health, we should nourish all three every day. Each week, we're going to discuss an attribute, tips, and suggestions for acquiring and maintaining. Maintaining is always the fun part, isn't it? A healthy mind, body, and spirit. And healthy living always starts in our mind, our great computer, and we're the computer operators. From time to time, we will have special guests to learn from and have fun with. Today, we are going to talk about our healthy bodies and stress. And just saying the word stress is enough to get us a little bit on edge sometimes. But we all have stress and either we manage it or it manages us. There is good and bad stress. And even good stress still has an effect on our insides. It's still stress. But everyone feels stress from time to time. None of us go without stress. We're going to talk about stress, what it is. We're going to talk about the good ways to cope with stress and some different things that may trigger stress. And as we talk about them, it's a great reminder for us to be able to know some ways to counterbalance stress. So this time we're going to be talking about things that are going to help us again to become healthier in our mind, our body, and our spirits. It's important to know when your limits are when it comes to stress. And because stress has been associated with the six top killers, unfortunately, in this country. So what is stress? A definition of stress is the brain's response to any demand, something that causes mental strain. Many things can trigger this response, including change. Changes can be positive or negative as well as real or perceived. Sometimes we stress ourselves out for the what ifs, maybes, and you know, buts. So stressors may be reoccurring. It could be something going on over and over again for a short term or a long term. So what are some of the top life circumstances that increase stress? And this is not to cause stress, this is just for your own information. And it also helps us to know because when we have friends, family, and other people in our lives that are going through stressful times, these could be some triggers that are causing that. One of them is the pandemic. And who, you know, you say that and everybody just, their brain just has a flashback. Another one's a death of a spouse, a divorce, marital separation, a jail term, a death of a close family member. I was telling my husband, I have bought so many sympathy cards and it really makes me sad when I have used them and have to replenish them. Another cause for stress is a personal injury or an illness, marriage. Getting married, can you all, if you've been married, remember how much fun and stressful getting married was? If you've been fired or released from work, Marital reconciliation, when you come back together and start this life again, that's another way that we can give each other grace and space. Retirement, it's a time when you, a new season of life, new changes, and people have to work into retirement sometimes, replacing what they were spending all that time doing with something different. I don't believe we retire, we just change the ways that we serve other people. It could be a change in the health of a family member, a pregnancy. Oh my goodness, if you've ever had a baby, 
then you know the stresses of going through a pregnancy and through labor and delivery. And then voila, you've got this precious new life that you're taking care of. Sometimes sex, sexual difficulties can cause stress. A gain of a new family member. <clears throat> Think about it if you had brothers and sisters and when they came into the family, there was a new dynamic. Sometimes a business readjustment can have that effect. A change in financial state. You know, we trust the Lord for so many things and we have so many reminders. Another stressor is the death of a close friend. Yes, this is all a one-way trip for all of us. We are all going to be dying one day. and We don't know when it is. But when we have a death of a close friend or even a family member, we really do miss and we have that brokenhearted and we have to go through a grieving process. And that'll be another conversation for another day. Some other things are changes in responsibilities at work. All of a sudden, you've got um, less people working and more responsibilities. A change in number of arguments with your spouse. Yes, this is like life. It goes all around. But you know what? We give each other the love and the forgiveness and walk in forgiveness. Another one is foreclosure or on a mortgage or a loan. Changes in responsibilities at home or leaving home. How many people have had a child that has grown up and they have gone off to college and there's a new dynamic? They used to call it an empty nest syndrome. Sometimes troubles with in-laws. You know, we really work on having as much peace with each person to live in peace as much as possible. Okay, it's now time for my stop sign. I like playing with my stop sign. And we've talked enough about the things that can cause stress. So now it's time to lighten up a little bit. Laughter helps with mood and emotional state of being. And there's so many different ways that we can learn about laughter. And we can talk about that another time too. So this is a couple, this is our little station break. What happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed away. <laughs> That's a fun one to share with your children. What happens when a frog's car breaks down? It gets towed away. This is another chuckle. And yes, it can be silly chuckles. So what did the duck say when she bought a lipstick? Oh, just put it on my bill. I like this one so much. It says, a teacher asked her students to use the word beans in a sentence. And each student took a turn. One said, my father grows beans. Another one said, my mother cooks beans. And the third student spoke up and said, we are all human beings. <laughs> yes, we are human beings. So how does stress affect the body? And not all stress is bad. Sometimes it can help us to protect when you may be in danger. That reaction just needs to kick in sometimes. A nerve chemicals and hormones are released during such stressful times and it prepares us for a threat or to flee to safety. And it can even boost your immune system. So remember, stress has different effects on our body. But with chronic stress, those same nerve chemicals that are life-saving in short bursts can suppress functions that aren't needed for that immediate survival. Your immunity is lowered and your digestive and reproductive systems stop working normally. But once that threat has passed, the other body systems act to restore normal functioning. Isn't our body just such an amazing miracle? Problems occur if the stress response goes on for too long. Such, you know, when the source of stress is constant, it's sort of like that little dripping sink, that faucet that we hear. Yes. That can be stress day in and day out if we don't address it. So how does, your, how does stress affect your overall health? There's at least three different types of stress, all of which can carry some physical and mental health risks. The first 
is a routine stress related to the pressures of work, family, and other daily responsibilities. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can start feeling my little eyes start twitching and I'm sitting there going, oh, I've released everything and whatever. Why is my eye still twitching? We have to define those ways to counterbalance it. The second stress is brought about by a sudden negative change, such as losing a job, divorce, or illness. And the third type of stress is traumatic stress. And this is experienced when an event like a major accident, war, assault, or a natural disaster. But the body responds to each type of stress in similar ways. Different people may feel it in different ways. For example, some people experience digestive symptoms, while others may have headaches. Some may have sleepless nights, depressed mood, anger, and irritability. Sometimes I have just been irritable and I'm not really even sure why. And that's a signal and that's a time just to remember we're going to stop. So people under chronic stress are prone to more frequent um, severe viral infections such as the flu, common colds, vaccines such as flu shots are less effective. All of the types of stress change in our health from routine stress may be the hardest to notice at first. Remember, like I told you, my twitching eye or just being irritable and not really understanding why? Because the source of stress tends to be more constant than in cases of acute or traumatic stress, the body gets no clear signal and returns to, to return to normal functioning. So don't you know, it's like the body adapts so much to things that are out of whack sometimes. It's the same thing with that, that routine stress every single day if we don't do something to adjust that. And again, over time, that continued strain on the body can lead to one of the six top killers in our country. Again, heart problems, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, anxiety disorder, and other illnesses. So it's time for another break. We're going to stop again because this whole time is not going to be all about the negative things because we're going to identify the stress and what causes it, but we're also going to find out great ways to counterbalance it. So this is another time just for some fun jokes. In a Catholic school cafeteria, a nun places a note in front of a pile of apples. Only take one. God is watching. Further down the line is a pile of cookies. A little boy makes his own note. Take all you want. God's watching the apples. <laughs> the Dalai Lama said, if you feel burnout settling in, if you feel demoralized and exhausted, it's best for the sake of everyone to withdraw and restore yourself. Remember, we're always releasing, receiving, and renewing. We need to have those times when we become restored and renewed, and we have to schedule those times in. So how can we cope with stress? The effects of stress tend to build up over time, but taking those practical steps to maintain your health and outlook can reduce or prevent um, some of the following effects. So here are a couple of tips on helping to cope with stress. And if you know, if this doesn't work well for you, then seek the help from a qualified mental health care provider. I call it mental wellness because that is always we're taking care of our mental wellness as well as we are doing our physical wellness too. But again, seek help, reach out and ask for help. And don't feel like you're the only one. We all go through these times. The getting proper health care for an existing or a new health problem is so important. Again, we have not because we ask not. And we all need to have that friend, somebody that we can just reach out to that won't be judgmental, but that will just come alongside us and love us, pray for us and say, you know what? If you need some help, I have some resources to share. 
So here's some fun stress relievers. Again, I told you we're not gonna be all negative. We're gonna stop again and take a break. This is huge. We're going to breathe in for four, hold for four and breathe out for eight. So remember, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And do this several times a day, throughout the day. What it does is several great things. It helps to reoxygenate the brain. It helps us just to release and recenter and become focused again. And it's really important too for you to get up and go outside and take a breath of fresh air, you know, several times a day. So pick a couple of the following and try something new or something you haven't done in quite a while. Get crafty. Expressing yourself creatively is a great way to distract yourself from your problems. Plus, it's relaxing and it helps you to release endorphins. Try listening to music. You can sing, and it doesn't matter if somebody's around or not. You can draw, or in particular, if there's another kind of craft that you enjoy doing that you haven't done in a while, crocheting, knitting, doing a puzzle. But even creating a vision board is very um, healing, renewing, and restoring. And it also encourages us because we're looking ahead. That's what a vision is for. It's looking towards the future. Another is to exercise. And yes, we need to exercise every day. Remember, you either move it or lose it. I tell myself that all the time. I get to be 70 this year and you either move it or lose it. But regular exercise can increase your self-confidence. It can improve your mood. Yes, even walking. It can re re release um, cortisol levels and improve oxytocin. It can help you to relax and lower your um, symptoms of mild depression and anxiety. It can also help you sleep, which is often disrupted by stress and depression and anxiety. So remember, think about exercising, do something different. Find something that is something you haven't done in a while and just work on it. You don't have to be perfect, just move it so you don't lose it. Another is to laugh. Laughing reduces stress, both momentarily and in the long term. It by reduces your stress hormones. In fact, even anticipating laughter has the ability to relax and the ability to um, help us to be able to combat those things. I have done laughter yoga before, and yes, you have to make yourself laugh but it's so rewarding in the end. Try watching a funny film. I used to love watching The Little Rascals. You're probably too young to know who that is, but The Little Rascals was a fun um, show that I used to love to watch. Just watching a comedy show, just to laugh out loud is huge. And you know what? Please don't forget to laugh at yourself. I do things all the time. I can say some things and it just makes me laugh at myself. Another is to cuddle with an animal. Pets are great for your health in more ways than one. Petting an animal for just a few minutes can reduce stress. Walk a dog. And if you don't have a dog, ask your neighbor if you can walk their dog if they have one. But the mere act of walking can be stress relieving. And if you know what? It can be a deed of kindness at the same time. So you can walk your neighbor's dog, reduce your stress, and do something kind for your neighbor. Get outside, even if it's in the middle of winter or all seasons of the, um, the year. Get outside and just breathe. And it's no surprise that being outdoors does wonders for our health. We spend most of our time inside. And so if you're stressed, head outside. Let the sun just bathe and shower over you. It increases your vitamin D and vitamin K. It can reduce your blood pressure. Remember when we were a child and we just laid out in the grass and we looked at the sky 
and looked at the clouds and we dreamed, we daydreamed. Yes, you can still do that. It does not matter. We are just older children now. Another is to plan a vacation. And we've said before that planning a vacation is sometimes the best part, especially for girls. We love planning things. So it's a great activity to do when you are stressed. Planning for the future, a planning for a trip anywhere. It doesn't have to be a long week trip. It could be a couple of days, a mini trip. It could be a one day little trip. So just, you know, do something to have a difference and a change. A change of atmosphere and scenery is huge. It helps you to focus on something else. Perform a random act of kindness. I loved meeting Zig Ziglar before he died. And one of his things that he said was that, you know, if you come across somebody that doesn't have a smile, give them yours. Because when you smile at somebody, they automatically smile back. And if they don't, then they really have something that's going on in their lives. And you know what? You can do a sweet, kind gesture going, I hope you have a great day. I hope this is, you know, have a better day or whatever it is. Try volunteering is another deed of kindness. And somebody that had shared with said, you know what? You can even put up a note someplace. That's a little deed of kindness going, you know what? You are awesome. Smile. You are just so important to be here. You might not ever know who reads that little note or that sign and what it does for that person. Get lost in a good book. Yes, the old fashioned kinds of books. I mean, you can read it on a Kindle, but you know, a great book is wonderful for us just to have another way to just distract, but just to de-stress. And just our brain is another way to function when you're reading a book because your brain has got these beautiful mental pictures. You can dance. You don't have to have somebody to dance with. Put music on and just dance like nobody is watching. It's fun, it's great, it relieves tension, it's great exercise. Hey, yes, us women love to multitask. So dancing can be our way of exercising, relieving stress and increasing our endorphins. So, and also I read a statistic that said that people that dance are 78% less likely to have dementia. So dancing is a great way to multitask to combat stress. Take photos, stop scrolling through Instagram and all these things. Take some of your own pictures and you'll be amazed at the different perspective in the world when you're taking something through a lens and then looking at it again. So find a way to make some positive changes for great pictures. Again, helps those stress levels. Now you're gonna think this is a really funny suggestion, but it works. Scream and think about screaming. Does it sound like fun? Think again. And this is a way that you're going to be able to do it to protect your vocal cords. Because when you feel like you're about to explode, screaming is secretly exhilarating. A coach told me years ago, he said, go get a clean face cloth, roll it up. He said, I want you to go into your closet. I love the closet. And I want you to bite down on it, bite down on the, the um, clean face cloth and just yell from your gut, from your diaphragm. Just yell, uh, just go. Oh my goodness. When you do that just a couple of times, you feel five pounds lighter. All of a sudden you have released all this pent up stress. And I will tell you women, we are great stuffers. We can stuff our emotions. And then well, another way that we carry our emotions are in our hips and thighs. And that's why yoga is huge, especially happy baby for releasing that stress from your tension and thighs that we've been stuffing for so long. Something else you can do is to break something just like screaming is, is a great release, but do it in a safe way in a trash can or whatever. Just take those precautions and break something that really does not matter. But anyways, remember, these are just some suggestions. You don't have to do all of them. You pick something that might be beneficial for you. You can talk to a friend going through a tough situation or a time. Sometimes hashing it out with a friend can be a great way um, to help us to work through our issues. 
and commit to talking to them also about non-stressful things. Because just like here, we're talking about things that cause stress, but we're talking about things that counterbalance it. The same is when you're talking with a friend. Don't ever leave that conversation without it being on a positive note. Listen to a great song. It's no surprise listening to music releases dopamine in your brain. But did you know that music can also transport you to a different time? Pick a song from a less stressful period in your life and put on some music. Blow bubbles. Blowing bubbles is so much fun, even bubble gum. But if, in, if you don't have bubbles, you can blow up a balloon. Again, it's helping with that air and that oxygen moving. And you can also blow up balloons and just decorate your home or your office just for the heck of it. It doesn't have to be um, for some special occasion. But over time, again, continued strain on your body from routine stress may lead to some serious health problems like we talked about before. It can be heart disease, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. diabetes, depression, anxiety disorder, or other illnesses. So know what you can do to counterbalance stress is not only beneficial for today, but for your future health. And you know, there are some also natural nutritionals that can counterbalance the negative effects of stress in your body. A lot of them include adaptogens and some other things. And there's even happy brain chocolates that have a great amino acid that crosses the blood barrier of your brain and makes your brain happier. You can always check in with me and I would be glad to help you have more information about that. So stay in touch with people who can provide positive, emotional, and other helpful support. Again, ask friends, family, people in your community, religious organizations, you know, we are here to help each other. We're not here alone. And recognize the signs of your body's response to stress. We talked about sleeping and the other possible things that can cause some symptoms. You know, if we are not being our very best one day at a time, each day at a time, not perfect, but we're always working to, you know, set those priorities, decide what must get done, now and then what can wait and learn to say no ladies no is a great word not now let me pray about it let me think about it but you know what all of our plates are so full and until we take some things off of our plate we can't put more things on our plate so again it's a great time to stop and just to assess what it is that you have on your plate, that you need to be taken care of, that you're responsible for. And you know, you can let those things go. Journal what you have accomplished every day at the end of the day. And that's so important for us to especially end our day with gratitudes. But when you're writing down and journaling the things that you accomplished that day, yes, pat yourself on the back and say, good job, well done. And don't focus on the things that you were not able to do. Focus on those good things, those positive things that you did. And you know what? Even if it's getting up and going through your day and making it through the day, it is huge for you just to be able to say, yes, I did that. Avoid dwelling on problems that you, you know, can't do on your own. Again, seek help from a mental wellness professional who can help guide you. Explore stress coping programs. Proverbs 31.25 says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. So remember that, that verse, Proverbs 31.25. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Again, laughter decreases stress hormones and increases our immunity. Again, it's good for so many different things. The ability to laugh at ourselves helps shift our perspective and improves that mental flexibility. So what happens? Oh, let's see. This is gonna be our last joke for today, okay? A boy asks his father, Dad, are bugs good to eat? 
That's disgusting. Don't talk about things like that over dinner, the dad replied. After dinner, the father asked, now son, what did you want to ask me? Oh, nothing, the boy says. There was a bug in your suit, but now it's gone. <laughs> Psalm 37, three says, but the Lord laughs at the wicked for he knows their day is coming. So remember, the Lord always has the last word. Contact me, the healthy sales chick, for a complimentary 30-minute consultation. Go to www.thehealthysaleschick.com to schedule your session. Again, www.thehealthysaleschick.com. There's some free quizzes there if you want to take them. But thank you for being with us. I am Nancy White, a 30-plus year health advisor in living a natural, preventative, healthy lifestyle. Please join us next week on Wednesday at 7 Eastern Time on the Win Win Women TV Show.com. Until then, be blessed and remember to take care of your temporary temple until you get your permanent maintenance freedom. Thank you so much. See you then.